Hello, everyone. This is just a special broadcast. Hello, Walter. Hi, Martin. So what are we quickly going to discuss here? Well, with the elections in full steam, we want to just bring a few thoughts mm -hmm. and uh, let's just see where we're going prophetically. Of course. You see, a lot of people are asking us, so what do you think? What's, who's, what's going to happen? Who's going to win? And what is it? Going Nobody to, knows who's going no. to win. But let's let's just pray before we start. Martin. Of course, of course. Our Heavenly Father, we in summary want to discuss some important things that pertains to the elections that's ongoing, and we ask that you enlighten our minds and just bless us in this discussion. In Jesus' name, Amen. Amen. Martin, with the, the points of contention in this election so prominent and particularly issues of morality mm. and the role of religion and church and state, this is probably the most interesting election that I have experienced in my lifetime. It is. It's more, more interesting than the 2021. Yes. But let's make it quite clear that we are not taking a position as to who is going to win and why they necessarily have to win. Yeah. We're talking about a prophetic picture and as Quigley the Jesuit teacher of Bill Clinton already said at Georgetown University that the two parties are not there to change any policies yeah. it's just to change the God to get that done which they want done interesting that because how many of the policies that Trump set in that the new um, uh, government uh, put away. Yes. Not a lot. No, no. So it is, it is a Hegelian dialectic and a game. And whether the liberal side, so-called, mm. or the other side, so-called, wins, it doesn't matter. Now, purely from a prophetic point of view, I would say that the Trump picture fits the scenario mm. better mm. But even if the other side wins, I wouldn't be particularly surprised because it being a Hegelian dialectic, it can come from another quarter, especially if the other side is also aligned in some way to religious and it is organizations. One hundred percent. Both of the uh, participants claim that they are religious. Yes. For sure. Now, the important thing is the Hegelian dialectic. And as Quigley said, it doesn't matter which party rules. Yeah. Who is behind both policies? And uh, are they both on the same team when it comes to these uh, behind-the-scenes issues? Yes. In, in terms of Trump, he says he's a Protestant. His wife is Catholic. In terms of the other side of the scenario, okay. Kamala says she's Protestant and Biden was a Catholic. So and then, uh, as well with Kamala, there's Judaism as well. She's yes. a Jew. So, so let's have a look at some of these things. Yeah, let's have a look at this video. The German church thought that they had a religious exemption when it came to standing against evil. They said, oh, we just want to do church. Oh, we just want to preach the gospel. We just want to do evangelism. Well, when evil is rising, the devil also wants you just to do evangelism. And shame on you, because God has called you to disciple your people. He has called you to speak the truth. And when somebody tells you Christians aren't supposed to be political, that that's Christian nationalism, folks, that's the voice of the devil, okay? Uh, just to make the point, is there a serious religious aspect to this election? Of it's amazing. I mean, this was recorded at a uh, gathering of 3,000 pastors and Christian leaders where Donald Trump um, was talking. So He was presiding. Though. Yes. Yes. And he said that anything, anyone that says that um, you should not be taking a political stand is from the devil. Well, we've got... Uh, contradictory statements in the spirit of prophecy. Exactly the opposite. A word to Donald Trump. Mr. President, I speak of the mystery of your life. You were born on June 14th, 1946. From ages past, it was appointed that on that day, a scripture would be recited throughout the world. 
The scripture that was appointed for the day of your birth spoke of the bringing of God's vessel, a trumpet, into the world. President Trump, you were born into the world to be a trumpet of God, a vessel of the Lord in the hands of God. God called you to walk according to the template. He called you according to the template of Jehu, the warrior king. He called Jehu to make his nation great again. Jehu came to the capital city with an agenda to drain the swamp. Jehu forged an alliance with the religious conservatives of the land, so it was your destiny to do the same. To come to power, Jehu had to prevail against the nation's former first lady. So to come to power, you had to prevail against the nation's former first lady. Jehu overturned the cult of Baal by which children were sacrificed. So God chose you to overturn America's cult of Baal, Roe versus Wade, by which millions of babies were sacrificed. And you set it in motion on a day that was appointed from ancient times to cause a nation to turn away from its sin. There are so many mysteries to your life. But before you were born, God ordained that you would walk into his destiny. Let's ask again, is there a powerful religious aspect to this election? Amazing. And this is prophesying over him. Just as the same happened in 2020 and what happened to those prophecies. He's, a, he's, he's comparing him to Jehu. <laughs> yes. Now, in the, in the archaeological reliefs that we find, in some of the codes, especially of the Syrian kings, for example, Jehu is depicted with a Phrygian hat mm -hmm. bowing down to the kings of the other nations in subservience. Yeah. And God used him as a stick. Yes, he used him as a stick, but he wasn't exactly exemplifying yeah. uh, you know, what the religion stands for. But interesting that they should call him... Donald Trump, the Trump of God, and portraying him in this way that he would drain the swamp and clean up everything and bring in that change that prophecy says. But it could happen from the other side as well. Yes. Because if the ultra-liberal side wins and there's a backlash from Christianity, the pressure could easily bring about a change, especially since they're so affiliated with the religious sides as well. And Kamala has known that she can change her mind a little bit. Very quickly. Mm. Yes. What, when you win, as things come forth, what happens for you in the second term for faith office? What's your administration look like? So, well, first of all, we're going to set that up and we'll be talking to you and all of the people that we just met and anybody else that you think is appropriate. We'll have, but it's important and it'll be directly into the Oval Office and me. So we'll, we'll do that. Now, we have to save religion in this country. I mean, honestly, re religion is under threat in this country, serious threat. And we can't let that happen because I really believe it's, it's sort of the fabric of our country. It's the thing that holds our country together. And we can't, we can't lose it, we're, and we're not going to lose it. But you are so important. You do such an incredible job, and you keep the country together. And the more powerful you become, the better the country is going to be. So I'm just with you all the way. So as we said, statements like that just fit the prophetic mm. picture perfectly. If the other side wins, it could be like almost a shock, right? In terms of the religious world. Yeah. But it might just be something that uh, the adversary has up his sleeve. Uh, he always works with a surprise. He can come from the left and he can come from the right. So we're not going to take sides. We're going to talk once it's over. That's it. But this prophetic profile mm, mm. is where the country is heading whether it comes from the conservative side or whether it comes from the liberal side. Yeah. In other words, it doesn't matter which side is going to win. This is going to happen. Yeah. Just that the Republicans are vocalizing it. Exactly, exactly. And way better than when he speaks with um, Tucker Carlson. Correct. There's but as the Jesuit quickly said... Whether the one party wins or the other party wins, the agenda stays the same. Exactly the same. So you said that you were saved in the end by an angel. How have your views about God changed in the last eight years, and particularly after getting shot? Well, look, I've always been a believer, 
but I wouldn't say, you know, there's a certain pastor, Robert Jeffress, and I didn't know, his name is Robert Jeffress, nice guy from Texas. And he said, you know, Trump may not be the best Christian of all, but he's the only one going to take us to the promised land because he's the best leader and he's the toughest guy and he's going to be able to get us through this crazy lot. And he was a big supporter. And now I have unbelievable evangelical and Christian support because I have. I mean, I've done a great job for them and we're, you know, we're, we're together. But he said he may not know the Bible quite as well as other people are supposed to. But, you know, he also did something. They picked Ronald Reagan over Jimmy Carter a long time ago. You know, that to sort of, that yeah. was, they said he wasn't quite as religious, but he's the guy that's going to get the job done. And I really got, I did a great job with a lot of things having to do with saving religion because these people want to put religion out of business. They well, that's the picture of humility, isn't it, Martin? <laughs> <laughs> I find this election so interesting. You know, it's building on the last one. Yes. Because we had the server. I mean, people can go back and go and watch. I mean, they can go and watch Trump, um, Trump card that you yeah. did yes. before that. Nothing has changed. Nothing this is has just changed. building though. It's time. just that the sentiments have become heightened. And that's for sure. And the tempers have <laughs> flared. And the, and the division is is so much more yeah. defined. Yeah, yeah, that's true. And that, together with natural disasters, will bring about a change, no matter who wins. That's for sure. Yeah. Oh, for sure. I mean, just look at the two hurricanes that hit Florida and uh, North Carolina. Yes. Uh, we and, won't even do and that. And what but... happened in Spain now? Oh, yes, just now. But just for interest's sake. Let's say Kamala wins. Mm. Will any of these sentiments disappear? No. No, Not they'll only be heightened. Oh, it's going to... So even if she wins, and these sentiments become heightened. Could it explode into a civil war, perhaps? Even? Oh. But if it doesn't go that way, then this picture is in line with what prophecy says. If it doesn't happen this way, maybe through some other event, violence or whatever, mm -hmm. the picture will stay the same because this is the prophetic picture. Yeah, for sure. But as I look back at my life's journey and events, I now recognize that it's been the hand of God leading me to where I am today. And my faith took on new meaning on July 13th in Butler, Pennsylvania, where I was uh, knocked to the ground, essentially, by what seemed like a uh, supernatural hand. And I would like to think that God saved me for a purpose, and that's to make our country greater than ever before. So I'm here tonight to deliver a simple message to Christians across America. It's time to stand up and save your country. And I think it's very important for the people in this room to know, like Dr. Ben Carson knows, Americans of faith are not a threat to our country. Americans of faith are the soul of our country, right? Doesn't that line up with what um, Jonathan Kahn said? Yeah. He was the exactly chicken. the same. He was chosen from birth. He was going to be the trumpet. He's going to be the Jehu. Very interesting. He's going to drain the swamp. Yeah. He's great. going to clean up the morals. Does that mean he's going to bring back Sunday law? It can because the whole Christian world would love it. And they it, want it. And isn't it uh, enshrined in the 2025 document? Oh, but he distanced, distanced himself on that. Yeah, but his whole administration <laughs> was involved in writing that document. So that was electioneering. But again, yeah. Martin, it's interesting. I'm, I'm certain that even if it's not that verbal and out there, there's a similar Project 2025 in the Democratic camp as well. Of course there is. Mm. Of course there is. It might come not in by the front door, but via the back door. Oh, for sure. Things that There's I'm a lot of interest in uh, the uh, people coming from space, you know? Yes. And I know you're interested oh, in that. Oh, very too. interested in that. How much do they tell you about that? A lot. Really? Yeah. What do they tell you? 
How much can you tell? So I... How's that work? Is it like super I top I secret? I tell, you know. Tell I me. Think, well, based on Hunter Biden, I can say whatever the hell yes. I want, right? But no. But I interviewed a few people. It's never been my thing, I have to be honest. I, I have never been a believer. I have people that Area 51 or whatever it is, mm-hmm. in, I think it's the number one tourist attraction in the whole country or something. Area 51 in Las Vegas. Do you know that, right? Sure. I know what it is. I, I interviewed jet pilots that uh, were solid people. Perfect. I mean, great pilots, great everything. And they said, we saw things, sir, that were were very strange. I get that question as much as almost any question. Do you think that we have aliens coming, you know, flying around or whatever? What do you think? There's no reason not to. I mean, there's no reason not to think that Mars and all these planets don't have life. You know, not they, UFOs. They there, could be also. There's some super sophisticated. But I did interview... Uh, let's say three or four guys that, and without tremendous interest, if you had them, as I said, you'd love to have them as your children. Solid, beautiful people. They said, sir, there's something there. You know, they've- There's they something said, there. Said, yeah. So Martin, what's your take on that? Well, it's interesting. He, when they asked point blank, what do you think? Well, it's not that difficult to think that there might be life on other so what does that say because he believes it, it can be happen true. right yeah. how does that link in with the biblical story of uh, the devil masquerading as an angel of light and impersonating christ be careful jesus said when that starts happening mm-hmm. And Alice A. Bailey talking about mm-hmm. the externalization of the hierarchy, making manifest yeah. the hierarchy after 2025. That's what she says. I'm not saying it's going to happen, mm-hmm. but isn't this all dovetailing towards some supernatural occurrence taking place in the near For future? Sure. For sure. When uh, Kamala Harris was asked the same on Jimmy Kamal, she said mm, it's um, off limits. She's not going to say anything. Uh-huh. So, so they're both talking about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah. Interesting. And we're back with Vice President Kamala Harris. I want to ask you about something I read. Um, I read that the fir- one of the first phone calls you made after President Biden announced that he was dropping out was to your pastor. And I'm wondering if it wasn't a confessional, if you could say what that conversation was like. But I just called him. I, I needed that spiritual kind of um, connection. I needed that advice. I needed a prayer. And um, and there's a there's a part of the scripture that talks about Esther mm. and a time such as this and um, and that's what we talked about and it was very comforting for me and um, do you pray every day I do pray every day mm. I do pray every day sometimes twice a day mm. um, I you know my I grew up. So we grew up uh, in a little neighborhood church in Oakland, 23rd Avenue Church of God. And um, I was raised to believe in a loving God, to believe that your faith is a verb, you know? You, you, you live your faith and, um, and that that the way that one should do that is that your work and your life's work should be to think about how you can serve in a way that is uplifting other people, um, that is about caring for other people. And um, that guides a lot of how I think about my work and, and um, what is important. Now, what's interesting is there you also have this faith connection, right? Yeah. They're trying to portray her in the media as anti-faith, like when those people spoke about Jesus in her rally. She said, you're at the wrong rally and yeah, yeah. all of those things that happened. So the faith issue is being played. But here she's showing that she does have a connection with the faith. All right, she was the first one mm-hmm. to perform or one of the first ones to perform gay marriages, etc. And then if you look at, at Pope Francis and his stance, you have the conservative Catholics yeah, totally yeah. against it. But the papacy never changes, so it's playing a game. Exactly. We it's... must talk about the papacy never changing. Yeah, right? yeah. Right. Well, I think we'll do that um, now with uh, the next WhatsApp prompt. Yes, we'll do that. So this is all an interesting game. 
And there's something there to lure people into a mindset. That's, that's where we go. Wandering after the Pope. So exactly that is what you're saying. This all, this whole election, is to drive people into a certain direction. Into a mindset. Into a mindset. And it'll, it will have to be a compromise mindset. So even if the legislation becomes religious, it must have a secular angle. Mm -hmm. So let's say you're talking about uh, climate change and Sunday legislation. Whether that comes from a conservative or a liberal side doesn't matter. Yeah. You come from a different direction, but the same result will, will be imminent, right? So shall we sum up and mm -hmm. say this is the most interesting election as far as the biblical prophecy is concerned of all times. Mm -hmm. Whether it, the, the outcome comes from the left, the, the prophetic outcome comes from the left or from the right, That'll be interesting to see. Yeah. And let's talk more about this when the election is over. I will. Thank you. Let's pray. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, the prophetic picture is so very clear and the noises that are being made are so very much aligned with the, what has been predicted. And we are so interested to see whether it'll come from one side or the other, which part of the dialectic will be played out. And soon we will know. And help us to make a right application is our prayer in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.